Onion skinning is a really common technique in 2D drawn animation, but it's much less common in CG, although a variety of packages offer some way of attempting to sort of fake it, usually involving duplicating geometry. This um, has a lot of issues and often doesn't really give you the same sorts of advantages that a traditional animator has when using you know, tracing paper or a package like Flash with some sort of basic onion skinning tools. What we aim to do with this tool is to make useful onion skinning available to CG animators and to uh, allow CG animators to look at their poses in a much more intuitive way. So just to give a very simple example, I have here this sphere and I've got it animated to be a very simple bouncing ball. The sphere is step keyed, so I just have poses here, no interpolation at the moment. Uh, and what I'm looking at is how I'm going about moving the sphere around and setting its poses. Now, of course, when one normally does this in CG, uh, you can't see what the other poses look like. You can't see where the sphere has been or is going to be, and that is what this tool allows you to do. So I'm just going to open up the onion skinning panel here, and I'm going to tell it a couple of things that it needs in order to generate onion skin frames for this object. First, what geometry exactly it's going to need to be rendering into these frames. So here I have to set the preview geometry. Then I need to set the controls, the objects that I'm keyframing that the onion skinning tool is going to be watching to see when it needs to render an onion skin frame. In this case, they're actually the same thing. That's not normal. For a more complex character, you'd usually have a control rig, which would be separate from the geometry. Since this is just a sphere, I'm using the geometry directly. I also need to select my camera and then set camera. And as soon as I do, it has the information it needs to render onion skin frames, which is exactly what it's done. So I have a few settings here. I can see how I can show how many frames I have in either direction. Um, three is a pretty good number, though. I can change the far opacity and near opacity, and the color for frames backward from the current frame and forward from the current frame. I usually find the defaults here are pretty good, but you can change these however you like. Now when I go about setting a pose, I can see where it's going, I can see where it's been, and I can sort of line it up with previous poses to figure out exactly how I want this arc to work. Moreover, any change I make to this, let's make a very obvious change just so it's clear, will be immediately, as soon as I shift to another frame, re-rendered. It's actually tracking my keyframes here to see when a change has been made, so that it will always maintain up-to-date onion skin frames with whatever it is that I've done. So I'm just going to put this back in a useful place, and maybe I want to sort of change my slow in and slow out. Uh, I can do this very intuitively. I can see exactly what the spacing is between various keyframes here. And I can change how I'm going about animating this arc very easily without having to necessarily resort to dealing with graphs, at least not at this stage. I can also generate new keys, and it will automatically know to follow along with what I'm doing. So if I want to generate a new key, all I need to do is generate it as normal. It will automatically render the necessary onion skin frame, and I can go ahead and start posing. The same is true if I shift a frame backward or forward in time. It will automatically figure out exactly what I've done and track correctly with it. Or if I go about deleting a frame, it will automatically know that I've done that and remove the onion skin render from the scene. And this happens completely behind the scene. The animator never really needs to think about keeping things up to date or in sync. Um, the only thing you're going to notice here is a slight hesitation when you scrub and it needs to render something. But because this is all being done through the hardware renderer, it hardly takes any time. And usually it's a pretty smooth process where it's not interrupting your workflow at all. Another nice feature in the onion skin toolkit is the ability to have multiple onion skinned objects have their own sets of onion skins that can be controlled independently. So if I were to unhide this other sphere here, I have a different sphere uh, doing something even simpler, which does not have its own onion skins, but which can be given its own onion skins independently of these ones that can be hidden, shown, or controlled independently. And I can do that by creating a new onion skin set, which I will call sphere onion skin. and which I will then go ahead and set up in precisely the same way I've set up the earlier sphere. And now it has its own onion skinning. I can uh, s switch which onion skin I'm operating on at the moment and do a variety of things, such as hiding the set. I can have onion skins only for this sphere and not for that sphere visible, um, or vice versa. 
This can be very useful when you have large numbers of characters in a scene and you don't want to have a million onion skins cluttering everything up. Now here's a bit more of a real world example, a full character animated with the onion skin tool. In this case I'm using it in concert with two other tools. I'm using Maya's character sets tool, which means even if I deselect everything, all of my keyframes will remain in the time slider. The onion skin tool works really well with character sets, and indeed I can tell it to look at the entire character set when looking at keys to track. The other tool I'm using here is called the Tween Machine. It's a script written by Justin Barrett, and what it allows me to do is to easily generate breakdown poses between my key poses here. So I'm going to go and generate a breakdown pose here. I can choose how close I want it to be to the previous pose or to the next pose uh, with this little slider. And once I generate it, the Onion Skin tool will automatically recognize that there's a new key, just as if I had made it myself. Now since I can see the previous pose while I'm working on this one, it's immediately obvious that the feet are rising from the ground before they should. So one nice thing I can do is select the feet controls and use the Tween Machine to make just those controls snap to where they were on the previous frame. So now I'll generate another breakdown pose. So if we scrub what we have here back and forth, we can see that the automatically generated poses here are pretty linear and they don't flow together very well, um, which is not that surprising since we just sort of threw them down in an automatic way. We really need the hand, for instance, not to move in this sort of linear V-like shape, but to really have some sort of interesting arc, a, a loop, as it comes around the back of the character, for instance. So I'm now going to tinker around with the poses a bunch, and this could take a while, so we're going to speed the video up. Here's where being able to see the poses that I'm coming from and going to while I'm working on the current pose really shines and makes things a lot easier. It makes it very easy for me to line up various parts of the character's shape and get these sort of nice transitions between poses. Even if you have something like editable motion trails or some other way of tracking an object's position through the scene, you don't really have the ability to see how the poses interact with each other, how the shapes flow into each other. And I think that that's something that's really important to good animation. Um, it really contributes to the fluidity and sort of life of the movement, and it's something that has often been quite difficult to achieve for C with CG. And I hope that uh, people will find our tool very useful for them.